The second reading is from the book of Genesis, starting at the end of the 11th chapter. This is really where chapter 12 begins, in verse 27 of chapter 11, because this is where the story of the, the, of the family of Abraham picks up. So listen for God's word to you. Now these are the descendants of Terah. Terah was the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. Haran died before his father, Terah, in the land of his birth, in Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and Iscah. Now, Sarai was barren, the daughter of Abram. She had no child. Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans, to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, And I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and all the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. May God add understanding and blessing to these readings from God's word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the title of the sermon is Reach, because when I thought about Morgan and Abby and Margaret, I thought about Reach Work Camp, because no matter who you went with, what group you were with, what year you went, where you went, all three uh, girls have been shaped in some way by attending a Reach Work Camp or being involved with Reach Work Camp activities. You've learned to reach out to your neighbors. You've learned more about neighbors you might never have run into otherwise. You've learned more about life situations for neighbors you would never have met. You have learned how to put your Christian faith into action. When I went to college, I was looking for a way to put faith into action. I grew up in a surrounding of faith with uh, both my parents as seminary trained um, and my dad uh, as a pastor. 
I had faith all around. What I wanted more of was faith in action. And I found that through the faith groups on campus. Faith in action is what REACH does so well. And it's what those, these graduates in particular have been shaped, uh, shaped in. So REACH is an important theme today as we celebrate graduates. And this passage in Genesis <clears throat> is a particularly helpful passage, I think, as we, as we think about faith in action and as we think about this particular point in late August when college-bound freshmen are going off. Because it requires that the characters in the story reach well beyond what they had known. As I said, chapter 12 really begins in chapter 11, and that's because we hear the backstory. If you start in chapter 12, you just have go. It's as if you just said, go to college without any building up or applications or auditions or visits, just go. But we know it doesn't work that way. There's a lot of build up, just as with Abram. Abram's father begins the journey. And in the middle of this, a son of his dies. And that causes him to stop the journey at some point and settle. So it remains for the next generation, Abram, to continue the journey. Is that not just a perfect young adult analogy? Your parents have set up certain things. They've taught you in certain ways. They have brought you to this point, but they're not going to college. They have prepared you for that, and now you take up the journey <clears throat> and you go. You don't leave your family. You follow in the trajectory, perhaps, all the teaching, all the shaping, all the forming, all the, the faith passing down, and now it's yours. So that when the Lord said to Abram, go, he was able to hear that for himself and go in the family footsteps and with his family still with him. But he reached beyond uh, what his family had done. As you go to college, you will be reaching past what has been the case already. You will be um, setting your own uh, patterns, your own ideas, your own way of living, but it will be connected <clears throat> to what you have known, just as Abram's journey was. Abram reached into God's call as well. God said, go from your country, from your kindred, from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. God didn't say, you're going to Canaan. God said, I'll show you where you're going. Is that not just the perfect illustration of life's great journeys? We do not know exactly where we will end up. You don't know exactly what the University of Scranton or Baldwin-Wallace or MCC. <clears throat> you don't exactly know what's in store. But you lean into God's call saying, go. Go and I will show you. So that means that you lean in trust, that you reach out in the trust that God will guide you guide you to whatever it is that you need to be doing, and guide you to the people and the places that will fulfill God's call for you in this chapter of your life. I noticed as I was reading, again, there's always something new in here, and I noticed again that God says, you will be a blessing. Go so that you will be a blessing. I think whenever we step out into a new journey, whether it's a new job, into retirement, into college, 
we are focused on ourselves and what the benefits may be for us or the hurdles may be for us. This helps us to think about God using us in that situation to be a blessing. There are people on campus, there may be your roommates, they may be your classmates, who are hoping that somebody will be for them a blessing. And God may just have called you to be that blessing. So as God calls us to take this journey, reach, reach in faith, reach in guidance, reach in trust, that God's call will be fulfilled and can be fulfilled through you as you are a blessing. And then the other thing I really like about this passage is that Abram reaches in worship all along the way. He comes into the land, and upon receiving a blessing and a promise from God, he builds an altar so that he can worship. He builds a place to pray. He builds a place to come into relationship, particularly with God. So on a journey, the ways of worship will be different. The places of worship, the community with which you worship will be different. But take a lesson from Abram, who said, I'm on this journey and I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to stop and worship the God who has called me, promised me that I will be a blessing, promised me greatness and guidance and presence, and I'm going to worship that God. Abram journeyed by stages. It wasn't all clear, and he worshipped as he went. I think he built altars along the way, worshipping as he went. The final end of it is never clear until we're at that stage. But the one who calls us to go is abundantly clear, and our response is abundantly clear. Journey by stages towards your goal, worshiping along the way. Now, the fact that this journey takes on new facets and a new shape to what you've known in the past is really important. And I think the Luke passage picks up uh, this thought really well. Luke says that Jesus said to his disciples, can you not read the present times? You can figure out all these other things, when it's going to rain, when the sun is going to come up, when the harvest will be ready. You can figure out when it's time for a life change. Can you not read the present time? I was thinking about that a week ago at Chautauqua. Celtic Christian theologian John Philip Newell preached for the week, and very, very inspiring week. And one of the things he said is that he thinks there's something new being birthed in the church today. And he asked, what is being birthed? That question has been haunting me. What is being birthed? Young adults are the critical guides if we think about what is being birthed. Young adults are going to help bring that to fruition. They're going to bring that into being. On Friday, Andrew and my husband and I had lunch with um, an old friend. Uh, we were in San Diego for the week, and we had lunch with one of my seminary professors who preached my ordination sermon and has been a friend. And she was talking about church and theology and asking Andrew different things. And it became really clear that the vision of what church can be and needs to be next is going to be a little different than what it's been. And the key is the young adults, 
the things that Andrew had to say, the reflections he had, the reflections that Morgan and Margaret and Abby and all of their classmates have to say are important in birthing something new. Abram birthed something, and he did not know what, but it turned out that he became the father, the ancestor of the three great Abrahamic faiths. Something new is being birthed. And so the call from Jesus to all of us, and particularly young adults, is read the present times. Bring your faith together with what is going on and help guide us into that journey of God's call so that the call of Abram may become very real in a new way so that what God has in mind may become a blessing. Soon the van will be packed, the van will go off to the west or to the east or to the south. Things will go like Abram journeying, packing up the possessions and going. Even when one stays put and makes a different kind of journey, you still pack some things up in a bag, in a backpack, in a car, and you go. Go to be a blessing. Go to reach into this new call of God for you. And as you do that, may all of us reach into God's call for us in this place, in whatever ways God will show us. May it be so. Amen.